everybody. Welcome back into Bayou Time. Harry McCullough here. We're talking with Trooper Ross Brennan, Public Information Officer with Troop C. Thanks for being with us. As always, a, you know, holidays are always a big time. This year, holidays and weekends, because weekends are, are a tough time for traffic yeah. accidents. Holidays are a tough time. This year, they combine the two. So I guess we're really, you know, we're not off to a great start, right? We've had a couple of issues, but uh, we're hoping to, to do better the rest of the way. Yeah, we were just talking about uh, before the segment started, zero for December is kind of our goal, but unfortunately, we're already well over zero, uh, just starting off with, the, with this month. I mean, just uh, this past Friday, they had a fatal crash on Bayou Blue Road, kind of near Maggie Lane. Um, for reasons we're still trying to figure out, there was a tow truck that was uh, trying to come to a stop, and he crossed center line, and he struck another vehicle head on. And unfortunately, the driver and the other vehicle, they uh, succumbed to their injuries and they passed away. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday night, right when all, of our, uh, all that cold front and bad weather was coming through, there was a pedestrian uh, fatality crash that happened on uh, West Main Street, kind of near uh, also Bayou Blue in that area there. A pedestrian was trying to cross the highway and walked out into the path of a vehicle, unfortunately was struck and killed. So just uh, this last few days, it seems like every weekend we always have something going yeah, on. Yeah, this kind of weather is always tricky too because you always have some fog involved, your windshields a lot of times are, yeah. you know, it's hard to see sometimes between fog, but your windshield wipers may not be perfect. Uh, you know, you might have humidity on the inside of your thing. So I guess it's real important to be both inside and outside the car to be watching what's going on. And the roads are slicker, I'm sure, at this time of year. Yeah, definitely. For whatever reason, we've been having some unusual, like, heavy fog in our area. So, look, state law requires you, you have to be visible from 500 feet away. So as you're driving down the highway, it might be, you know, the daytime in a sense, but if it's foggy, make sure you have those headlights on and make sure that other people can see you going down the highway. We don't want to see somebody pull out in front of somebody <clears throat> because they couldn't see you because you didn't have your headlights on. So make sure that the wipers are working and the headlights are on for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's very important. I, I know the other day, you know, I was just riding to go work out. It's still dark when you, I'm going and I'm going down Val High going, God, I hope there's no bikes yeah. on this road right now because it, it it is tough to see. So you got to re really be vigilant uh, for sure. Now, we did have a power outage almost the same time that cold front came through. Yeah. And it, almost in the North Terrebonne area, it seemed like all the traffic lights out. That, that had nothing to do with these accidents. No, it had nothing to do with the crash. It was just as a result of that severe weather that came through. But uh, we had a lot of issues where people, uh, look, whenever the traffic lights are completely out, it's supposed to be a four-way stop. Same thing that happened during a hurricane a few uh, months ago. Uh, some of the intersections, they had no power at all. So we just want to remind the, uh, the public that if there's no lights whatsoever, treat it as a four-way stop, all right? And so if you come up to an intersection the same time as another person does, it's always your person to your right who has the right of way first. So it just kind of keeps everything flowing that way. On that same token, if you come up to a red light and maybe it's flashing red, flashing red also means to be treated as a four-way stop. If it's a flashing yellow light, then that means you're supposed to go keep going on but proceed with caution always just kind of slow down make sure that everybody else is stopping um, there's some instances where maybe the main road has a flashing yellow maybe the side roads have a flashing red like i said it's supposed to be it's not a four-way stop in that case if there's a flashing yellow but just kind of slow that speed down just make sure that everybody else is obeying the traffic laws that we get through it safely yeah, yeah this is a tough time of year for sure and then like i said now, now we got christmas parties yeah. that seem like almost every day and then we'll be in the new year so it, it is a difficult time of year uh, for sure so um, it is interesting. Uh, you do have some travel tips for Christmas yeah. and New Year's. Like I said, we try and do, uh, you know, zero for December. But, yeah. you know, look, that's a, that's a tough ask for anywhere in the country for sure. So what, what are some of the tips we should look forward to? So just, just from the beginning of November, uh, just down here in State Police Troop C, we've investigated 13 fatal crash resulting in 22 deaths. I mean, that's a serious uptick. Last year in November, we only had two fatal crashes with two deaths. So we're well over that number. And it's a culmination of a bunch of different things, more people on the, ho on the roadways, especially after Hurricane Ida, people in that area. But look, we just want, of course, we want zero for December. And all these numbers, yeah, it's one thing to say a number, but it's somebody's relative, it's somebody's family member, it's a brother, a sister, a mother, right? And so we hate for any crash to happen. But as we come into these holiday seasons, the same thing we're always gonna say, if you do plan to drink, plan a designated driver, right? Before you even go out, that's the time to be thinking about what you're gonna do as far as your ride back home. And if you are that designated driver, make sure you don't consume any alcohol, right? And a lot of people will get that misconception, well, I'm just buzzed, I'm good to drive. Well, buzz driving is drunk driving. The reason that you're feeling buzzed is because the alcohol is taking an effect on you. So if you plan to consume any alcohol at all, always have a designated driver or an alternative ride home. Um, make sure that also everybody's properly seatbelted inside the vehicle. A lot of these crashes that we're seeing is that 
they probably maybe would have survived the crash if they had that seatbelt on. It just keeps you safe inside that vehicle, uh, keeps you in place that way, the airbags, everything else, all the other car safety features can also function in conjunction with that seatbelt. Um, also, if you are going to be traveling uh, coming up with Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, plan to leave a little bit early, try to avoid some of those crowds, uh, and just kind of exercise patience and caution on this highway. Uh, like I said, a lot of people in the area, uh, either they were uh, in town from hurricane relief or up from, you know, from down the bayou, moving up the bayou, just kind of exercise caution. There's probably going to be some traffic out there. But um, as you are traveling the highway, if you see an impaired driver, you see a distracted driver or some type of roadway hazard, always can call STAR LSP, STAR 577. What that'll do is that'll get you in touch with the nearest state police troop. Um, that way, hopefully, we can get somebody out there. If that, uh, if you can't remember that, you can always call 911, uh, get the local law enforcement. But there's also some other things, too, if you're planning your route. Go to uh, LA5, uh, or correction, I'm sorry, 511LA.org. Uh, or you, you can dial 511. And what that does is that's part of Louisiana DOTD. DOTD. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to see uh, road uh, construction on the roadways or maybe road closures, different things like that. You can always follow state police on social media or LADOTD on social media. That will also give you uh, the latest up-to-date information on potential road closures or maybe there's a traffic crash, keeping the road closed, different things like that. You know, it is a holiday season. So, again, if you see an impaired driver or if you want to know road conditions, there's a couple of ways to, to get into that. Huh? Yeah, so if you do see an impaired driver, you can always dial star LSP, star 577. Like we said, that will get you in touch with the nearest state police troop. If you can't remember that, you can always dial 911, get you in touch with the local law enforcement. While you're trying to plan your route to see if there's any type of road closures out there, anything like that, you can go to uh, 511LA.org or you can dial on your cell phone 511. And what that'll do is get you in touch with uh, the LA DOTD. They'll show you what road closures are, are out there, whether it's from construction or maybe from a crash or different things like that. So. Yeah, everybody's got a phone right now, so that's a good tool to have For sure. uh, when you're on the roadway. Hey, let's talk about some positive things during the holidays. You guys have a big toy drive. Y'all have been collecting, and a uh, pretty awesome deal that y'all do every year. Yeah, so Captain Bajron at State Police Troop C, uh, we were kind of throwing some ideas out there to bring some positivity back into uh, the area, especially after the hurricane. They have so many people, their Christmas is not oh, going to yeah. look the same. I mean, they might not even have a house to go home to. So, uh, you know, it's, a lot of us were fortunate. So what we try to do is uh, host a toy drive. We called it Phil a Cruiser, uh, like Phil a yeah. Police Cruiser. <laughs> so that's what we did last week. We, uh, we hosted all week long. We had a lot of people make donations, whether uh, it was from our own troopers, it people from the public, businesses, different things like that. So. What we wanted to do is that we wanted to, uh, as the troopers who are out there patrolling their areas, a lot of them uh, are in the hardest hit areas uh, in the right. aftermath of Hurricane Ida. So as they were out patrolling, they would come across kids and, uh, you know, first they'll start off with a friendly conversation, just strike a conversation up with them, talk with them. And then they will offer them, hey, uh, you want to come pick a toy out the back of the police cruiser? So, I mean, we were, we were down there in those areas that was the hardest hit. And, you know, a lot of the people are still, like I said, dealing with the after effects from Hurricane Ida, uh, still trying to rebuild. So uh, our, our goal was just to try to bring some normalcy back to uh, some of these families just by uh, offering them a toy with this toy drive. Right. I mean, look, just in terrible parent, I think we're talking about 3,000 uh, travel trailers or something that yeah. people are in uh, now are trying to get into, you know, from FEMA and, and from the other places as well. So these are some great pictures. Uh, and, and it's also a great touch point. And we, we've talked about this a lot, you know, with the state of policing right now, uh, that seems like it's always something to happen. You're right. You know, when there's a touch point, uh, but this is a great way for you guys to have a good touch point with the community and children and, and, and for you guys to have a good community relation. Look, man, it's a lot of toys. Yeah. Yeah. We're probably down to, we got about a, a fourth of that left that we're still, you know, we're still out there, uh, making rounds and stuff, but it's, it's the troopers out there, the areas that they work and live at, they're out there uh, interacting with the same people, you know, the, the, the areas that they're patrolling. Yeah. And uh, like I said, as they're coming across uh, kids and stuff in some of these hardest areas, <clears throat> trying to make that connection. What about troopers this time of year? This has got to be one of y'all toughest times of year yeah. to be a trooper and to be on the road with, with everything that's going on. Yeah, always the hardest part of state police is making that notification, especially in the fatality crash, to let them know that loved one got taken away so it's definitely and especially that recent uptick that we've had of a lot of fatal crashes it's hard on our troopers uh be able to uh go to that house in the middle of the night and knock on that door i mean it might be two one o'clock in the morning traditionally probably everybody would be asleep in the house but yet all the lights are on because they're waiting to hear from their loved one you're right they might be trying to call the phone different things like that they can't get in touch 
So that's always the hardest part. And we see every, every emotion from people falling out crying to anger to people with maybe even no emotion at all. So it's definitely, it's definitely the hardest part of our job is basically letting them know that their, their life as they thought it kind of crumbled. Yeah, no, and th this year in particular, you said 22 fatalities. Just we've since had. November 1st. And, and last year it was two. So, I mean, I, I guess there's nothing different this year. Well, I guess there's more people on the road. Yeah. And, and that's what we were talking about earlier. We got so many people that are in working on roofs and, and trucks and people that may not know the area and we got some tricky roads and a lot of just two lane highways too. So yeah. that may, you know, I'm not blaming <laughs> the guys that are helping no. us on, no. on the roofs by any chance, it's just, you have a lot more, but it's just a lot, a lot happening. You have a lot more traffic on the road, but, um, I just, we just need people to slow down out there and just pay attention. There's a lot of distracted drivers out there. Distracted driving can be just as bad as impaired driving. If you're staring at the phone, playing on it, you're not paying attention, you might be crossing center line, going off the roadway, different things like that. So look, we're just, we really want to urge the people just, whenever you get behind that wheel, one, don't drive impaired. Two, make sure you have that seatbelt on. That way if you do get in a crash, it reduces your chance of severe injury or even getting killed. And three, just pay attention. As you're going down the highway, you got to think that's a 3,000, 4,000 pound vehicle flying down the highway at 50 miles an hour, sometimes even more or less, right? So as, treat it as such. And we just want people to pay attention, focus on the roadway, because like I said, this is the worst part of the year. Typically, we have a lot of fatals just from people going out partying and drinking, driving impaired, um, and a lot more people on the roadways. But we, we don't want to have to knock on another door. And so if we can just kind of get the public to help out a little bit and make those good decisions behind the wheel, you know, we'll try to we'll try to get through the rest of the year. Where, uh, getting back to your toy drive, where where those toys come from and where are you guys, I, again, you guys are just troopers out and about and, and make eye contact and help <laughs> people out? Well, no, so the, the, the toys were donated by uh, either from troopers or different people in the public. They even had some business owners that donated some toys. And so it, it wasn't like a, a situation where normally you might go to like, a, uh, like, like one central event type thing. Um, maybe you might be out and about in public and you come across a kid at a, a gas station or something like that, but they're wearing, you know, they're properly harnessed inside their uh, child safety seat. Parents did everything right. So just kind of give them a little reward there that they're, you know, that the parents and stuff have done the right thing, keeping them safe. And maybe you might be on a crash or something like that. It might be kind of a traumatic event for that child, but yet here you might be able to offer a toy to kind of make the situation a little bit easier sure. for them. Um, and then also just kind of riding around, riding through neighborhoods and, you know, just kind of seeing who's out there and things like that, uh, trying to make that connection with the uh, community that we're out uh, serving. That's, that's great, man. You know, look, we all we all been through a lot, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good time. And, uh, man, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Thanks Same for being with out. us. Uh, be safe out there on the roads as well. And that's uh, Trooper Ross Brennan with the Public Information Officer with Louisiana State Troop C. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be right back with more Bayou Time after this.